Hey, what's up everybody? It's Flux with fluxwithit.com and today we're going to check out the Siglent SDS-1202X. This is an oscilloscope that's really useful for checking out waveforms, doing DIY stuff for your synthesizers, or just trying to learn a little bit more about the sound that you're creating. So let's take a look over at this thing and see what it can do. So the first thing you're going to notice about this oscilloscope is that it has a huge screen on it. Screen is super useful. It's not just a simple digital oscilloscope screen. This thing is what they call their super phosphorus oscilloscope. So it has this grading technology on it that's going to give you 256 levels of intensity. You know, you, you can sort of emulate the look of an analog scope. It's a little bit different than an analog scope and how it works. The waveform capture rate on this thing is 60,000 waveforms per second uh, in normal mode and then in sequence mode that's 400,000 waveforms per second. Now for uh, you know guys like me, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm using this thing mainly for my synthesizer DIY type stuff. You know, just checking out my waveforms, making sure that the sounds that I'm designing are what I want and just kind of learning more about my synthesizer, that sort of thing. So that's where the large 8 inch 800 by 480 resolution screen really comes in handy here. Right now I have it hooked up with a Roland System 1M and the top waveform is what I'm taking a trigger from. So I have just a square wave coming from oscillator 1 here and if I play a sequence you can see that everything is kind of uh, digital down here. That's because I have a bit crusher going on. And let's say I want to back the bit crusher off. You can really get a great view of what the, the waveforms are doing here and, and you can really check it out and kind of dive in deep. Now I want to show you something here. An advantage of a digital scope like this over an analog is that you can freeze your waveforms and you can kind of dive in and check them out. So let's say you're looking at something like a, um, you know, a, a kick drum or something and you want to really dive in and find out what it's doing. Or maybe you were working on a sequence and you found a filter was doing something interesting at a particular part. You can freeze that waveform and then I can zoom right in and really kind of check it out. You'll also notice that this display right now is uh, colored. It's not just one single color. And what that is, is we have a color grading on here. I can turn that on or off. And that's going to tell me, uh, red is going to tell me the most consistent uh, areas of the waveform, whereas blue is going to be the, the less often. Uh, we, we'll get into that a little bit later. There's also a mode on here called persistence. And if I turn persistence on while this thing is running, we'll go ahead and start this back up. Let's go ahead and turn the persistence on. We can kind of check out where the peaks of the waveform are. We can see where our waveform has been and it'll give us the opportunity to see it, you know, for an infinite amount of time or we can select between it. Let's say we want it just for a second and then for it to go away. And of course, I'm still zoomed in. I can zoom right back out. I can zoom in even further, of course. A great aspect about this scope is it's actually really easy to use. This scope is not, um, it's really not that complicated to use. There's a lot of great uh, buttons on the display here for you to dive right into the different areas of the scope without uh, getting too, too menu divey. There's certainly um, a lot of hidden functions and a lot of uh, interesting techniques that you can do with this. Uh, there's lots of different trigger modes on here. If we go into the trigger section, you'll notice that kind of like a synthesizer, each section is separated out on your front panel. So you've got your vertical adjustments for each channel here. This is a two channel scope and we have an external input here. And we can change the voltage divisions by moving the vertical knobs here. And then we can change the placement vertically on the screen from these knobs here. 
You can also press and click it in to zero where that knob is at or where that waveform is starting at. Your horizontal is this knob here. And then of course you can use this knob to adjust the position back and forth. And how fast you move the knob will uh, scale how, um, how smooth your movement is of the waveform. So it's pretty easy to get it you know, right to where you want it at. Now, if you click in, we can zoom in on our waveform and you'll see that the, the grayed area is what we're not seeing and then this clear black area is the zoomed in version of that waveform. So if, for instance, we are sending it um, a, uh, a, a complex waveform, let's uh, patch that up now. So let's say I want oscillators 2 right here. Now if I zoom out, we can see, let's take the vertical amount down a bit, and we'll turn the display off. That's another nice feature here is that we have a quick, a quick access right here to our, di our display persistence. So if you want to turn the persistence on, you can just click this button or turn it off. All right. Now, if I want to zoom into this waveform to really see what it's doing, I just click that horizontal knob and then I can adjust how zoomed in I am. And I can back it off as well. And you'll see again, I'm still triggering from uh, the square wave up top here. I can adjust my trigger by going over the trigger, press setup and then source. I can change that to channel two. I can change it to an external source, external 5, AC line, back to channel 1. We can do single triggers so that we can freeze and then, of course, zoom in from there. And, of course, when you're zoomed in, you can scroll through your waveform here. Let's back it off a little bit and we'll scroll over. And we can zoom in on this waveform here, check it out, see what it's doing, and then I can click run again and it's back on. Let's zoom back out here. So this way you can get both an overview of your waveform. Let's bring that. We can get both an overview and we can get kind of a larger display of what our waveform is doing. So it's really easy to kind of just check, check out whatever it is you want to see and you can just hop around on this thing very fast. Uh, some other options on this thing that you can jump into is in your utility area. This is whether or not, you know, you, your sounds are on. So you, you kind of get this feedback, this audio feedback as you're clicking buttons so that you know that you've actually pressed what you need. You can go into measurement modes here as well. Now in measurement mode, we can actually uh, pull this up. Let's say what type of measurements you got peak to peak, maximum, minimum, amplitude, uh, you've got some interesting math on here as all. Well. You can check out fall time and rise time. And uh, that's really great for if you're checking out envelopes um, or if you're calibrating an oscillator or something. You can really check into this thing pretty deeply to find out, you know, if you have everything set up properly or if things are doing exactly what you want them to. Another nice mode about this is roll mode. Uh, this is another mode that you're not really going to see on an analog scope. Now this is showing us real time data. So, and I can scroll in a bit here. And when I scroll in, it automatically will take it out of roll. And we can see our triggers here. Let's bring that back in here. And as I adjust, let's say for instance, if I adjust my oscillator to frequency, you can see how we're adjusting, just like so. And we can take the color of it down a bit. If I bring the color knob up, it's kind of like a cross modulation on the System 1M for this waveform. It's like an FM. Now let's check out uh, how this thing works on drums. All right, so in this example, what I'm going to show you is how this thing works on drums. And what's really cool about this is uh, I'm using the two-channel scope to look at the 
dry signal of the drums and then I'm also going to be looking at the compressed signal of the drums. So what I have is uh, some modular drums from Little Drummer Boy 2, um, Audio Damage Boom Shack and uh, Audio Damage Neuron, a few other drums in here all running into the Audio Damage compressor and the top channel here is going to be the uncompressed drums, the bottom channel is going to be the compressed drums. So what we can do with the scope is we can actually easily look at what our compression is doing. Let's bring up the signal here. And right now we're completely dry and what I'll start to do here is I'm going to increase the threshold to about 12 o'clock and then I'm going to start bringing in the compression and we'll notice the effect here. Let's add some makeup gain. And let's go really heavy, heavy handed with the compression here. You can really see how you're altering your waveforms when we do this. And if I, you know, pause my scope here, and we'll pause the drums here. Let's zoom in and we can really get a look at how we're altering our waveforms on here now. Uh, it's very easy to kind of get an idea of exactly what your compression is doing and you don't really have to fight uh, to, to try to figure out exactly what's happening on here. So it's very useful for this sort of thing. And of course, again, we can certainly scroll left and right to really get an in-detailed view of this. We can stay very close right here and if I... Let's increase the time of the compression. So we're slowing the compression down a bit. And again, we can use single trigger mode here and it will take that sample and we can check it out. We can zoom in, so we can see that we've got some kind of soft saturation clipping going on up top from the limiting. We can bring that back out. We want to go really heavy handed with the makeup gain and get some saturation going. And then check out how that clipping looks. Again, that's the audio damage compressor is has its own inbuilt saturation in it. And that's kind of what we're seeing there. Again, back that off a bit. Let's go really heavy with the threshold on it too. slow down or we'll speed up the compressor a bit and again you can just easily check out exactly what's happening now if I go into my display mode I can check out the dot view I can take the colors on and off we can also um, adjust the intensity display we can back that way down Bring it up. And again, if you really want to get close, we can really get in there and see it. Now we have the persistence on infinity right now. Here, let's move this back a bit. So we can really get a great view of these drums. And then we can turn the persistence off. Zoom in even further here. And we'll Let's 
As I adjust my trigger, it, it'll decide where it's capturing the waveform at. So if I want to come in nice and tight like this, I can really kind of bring it in here. If I only want to get that snare drum, I can really kind of just go to the level of that waveform and we can see it. So using single trigger mode here, what I can do is, so using single trigger mode here, what I can do is I can set my level of the trigger and then I can press single. And when I get to that trigger, it's gonna capture that waveform so I can see it up close. This is really handy if you're trying to understand if you know maybe you're clipping on a part of a drum that you don't wanna be clipping on or maybe you're you know, you're, you're having trouble getting uh, a certain aspect of a waveform the way you want it to. It's just a really easy way to understand better what you're doing. Let's try this again. And of course, what I like to do is I like to move the position over here all the way to the end. And there's that kick. I can go out even further. And I'll bring this up here. There's that kick. That, that's the full kick drum right there. And then of course you could still zoom in and check it out. Turn your color on and off. So it's very handy to be able to identify exactly what the compression is doing to your waveforms and how you're affecting your sound and as opposed to just using your ears if you want to dive in a little bit deeper to understand what's happening with your sound or if you just want something cool to look at you know you can certainly hook this up and uh, take a look at it. So this has been the Siglent SDS-1202X Oscilloscope. And if you'd like to know more about it, I highly recommend you head over to their website. They've got quite a wide range of different scopes to check out. Um, so definitely worth checking these things out so that you can find out a little bit more about your sound. This is Flux of FluxWithIt.com. Peace.